I am joined by Denise Hills, a geologist and project manager at Advanced Resources International, bringing over 17 years of experience in geologic energy research, science communication, and environmental policy. With her extensive expertise in community engagement and energy justice, she is here to share insights on how earth and space science can shape global policy and the future of innovation. Denise, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for so, having me. How can science have a seat at the table when it comes to policy decisions and, uh, and discussion? My experience has really been people crave the information that scientists can give them as long as it's presented to them in a way that is accessible to them. Uh, so few uh, policymakers, legislators have a science background that they need that expertise from elsewhere, from, pe from scientists. And so scientists who can be willing to speak up should, and sh they should call up their, their, the relevant people who need the information that they have. AI and machine learning seem to walk hand in hand with science whenever the topic comes up. So where do you see earth and space science's place in this fast changing area? Wow, what a great question. Uh, AI machine learning, there are so many good things that can be done with that. We can reduce time to actionable science using tools such as AI machine learning. One of the things we have to be aware of though is that we can build in our own biases into AI tools and machine learning. People can, uh, the general public can also mistrust, you know, black box things like AI and ML. So being able to explain what AI can do, what machine learning can do, and what it can't do, I think is gonna be really, really important. And to be willing to learn and adapt uh, how these tools are used. Uh, you know, it's just like any other tool that we use uh, in science and, and technology. So you mentioned the general public and given your you know, expertise and your involvement in science communication and public engagement, where do you see the public's role in trying to engage with them and grow and you know, it, recruit people to our field? That, what a great question because we are all part of the general public too. So that's one thing I think scientists often forget. We are also general public. So it, you know, it's not an us versus them thing. We do need to uh, engage with people who are not active in science and help bring them along. They don't need to become scientists. They don't need to become science experts. What they need is they need to be able to understand that science is important. The work we do is important. And the, the ways we do that are to build those connections, to build that trust, to find those common grounds, to find those common interests, and help people understand that the work we do is actually relevant to what they do every day, and that it's important, and that it's important to be supported, that it is not an elitist thing, it is not something that doesn't affect them, that it does affect their day to day. It affects their, their prices of goods. It if, particularly earth and space science, you know, it's like we're, we're natural resources. That, that's in everyday things, you know. Yeah, I often find that too. People don't realize they're like, well, how is geology at all relevant to me? And I'm like, what are you holding right now? <laughs> yeah, what are you holding right now? Yeah, where is your house built? Yeah. You know, do you have a flood risk at your house? Is your house going to be impacted by hurricanes? Uh, you know all these different things, geoscience has a role in it. Yeah. And I think as, as scientists, if we help humanize ourselves and say, the work I do maybe doesn't seem like it directly affects you, but it helps influence every part of your day-to-day -day life. How can global policy be strengthened and grown specifically regarding energy science? Wow, uh, how can it be strengthened? I think continuing to train scientists who have a skill set to do science communication with a broader audience. Uh, programs like AGU's Voices for Science is an amazing resource because that program helped train me how to better interact with policymakers and be able to communicate in ways that they need. So not only training more people, but providing support to the people who are good at that. Not every scientist 
not every engineer should necessarily <laughs> be doing open science communication. They should, sometimes the communication they need to be doing is with their peers rather than with other types of decision makers. So supporting the people who do that work, ensuring that your company or your institution understands the value of that type of work, that kind of soft skills is often not as valued when they look at tenure and promotion or raises or bonuses and things like that. But that's actually what tends to move science forward even more. Well, thank you so much for sharing this insight. Well, thank you for having me.